There aren't a whole lot of low priced smartphone options in the United States. The reasons for that are a whole video in and of itself. One company though continues to deliver for us in that area and it is OnePlus. Their flagships have constantly been among our favorites, but their Nord line has been a great low cost, high value option for many in the US. Why? I'm gonna walk you through their latest, the Nord N25G. Let's get into it. Hey, if any of the videos on this channel, any of the videos from my peers have helped you, please consider hitting us with that thumbs up, clicking that subscribe and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload the latest reviews and content. This is the Nord N25 G. It's a beautifully designed, inexpensive handset, even by US standards for pricing. At roughly $300 unlocked or paid in full on a carrier, you're gonna get a lot. In some cases, more than competing phones at similar price points. Let's begin with a look around the device. It has a very hard angled appearance, but with a slight chamfer on the edges, making the phone feel just right in hand. Thanks to the flat sides, it's easy to hold on to, but even easier on your hand because it doesn't feel like it's digging in. Right side of the phone, you'll find the power button, top, a microphone. The left side is where the volume buttons reside, along with the SIM tray and micro SD slot. The bottom is where you'll find the USB-C port, another microphone, a three and a half millimeter audio jack and single mono speaker. The front of the phone and what's around back are the standouts here. The front features a 6.43 inch 60 Hertz AMOLED display at 1080 by 2400. So that's full HD plus. And it is a gorgeous display. Many of its US competitors are only delivering LCDs at this price and the different shows. OnePlus's AMOLED puts on a brilliant show with my video playlist. The amount of detail in the shadows with my Witcher test video is a delight. Thor Ragnarok looks great and my sea turtle shows plenty of detail while the waters above are not blown out, which can sometimes be the case with low quality displays. Also on the front of this phone, you'll find an under display optical fingerprint sensor, which works like you've come to expect from OnePlus sensors. In other words, plenty darn good. And at this price point, it's one of my top picks. The back of the phone is where you'll find the other standout features, one of which is a 4,500 milliamp hour battery with 33 watt fast charging with the 33 watt charger in the box. The battery will get you through a day or more. I was getting a little under a day and a half, but even if you're one of those who Hulk smashes your phone's battery life, that 33 watt Super Vogue will get you charged up halfway in a few minutes time. The phone does not have wireless charging though at this price point, it isn't a feature I'd expect. For me, other than the phone's design, the most standout feature is the quality of the photography you're going to get for just under $300. What you get is a 64 megapixel rear shooter with a 1.79 aperture and imaging algorithms, which produce pictures that punch above their weight compared to the competition. Here's the pooch again, and I have to say that I'm quite happy with not only the portrait mode photos and good lighting conditions, but the bokeh, even backlit, you get some really pretty lens flare along with a beautiful background blur. The colors in her fur and the surrounding foliage all look really natural without harsh contrast or overdriven saturation as I've seen in competitors. And as you can see with my red flower test here, the camera handles that harsh color rather nicely. You can still see the veins in the red flower petals and these close up images of the flower. You can see the bugs inside along with solid detail in the flower petals. The colors in this white flower and gold tone stamen are beautifully captured and I even took some macros with the two megapixel macro, but we'll come back to that in a moment. If you're looking at objects you wanna capture and color or light and their dynamic range aren't as important as detail, then jump over to extra HD mode, which produces larger 108 megapixel images with a bit more contrast and saturation than the 64 megapixel mode. You'll be the judge when it comes to which look best suits your eye and style. 
at night. I took the camera out for a spin at the Metro stop and was not disappointed. Night mode on the phone is very good. My nearest favorite competitor here in the States doesn't even come with the night mode, but here you get shots which will be fine for social sharing. If you go pixel peeping, you will see the softness and the detail of the shots. And if you hit that 2X zoom, you're gonna increase it. But overall, there really isn't much to complain about with these images at this price. You can see the difference in these two, one with night mode and the darker image using the standard photo capture. Now, when it comes to that two megapixel macro, your results will definitely vary, but to a degree, I think that's because most folks don't know how to use a macro lens. Macros require a lot of light. And as you can see here from these images I took indoors with low light, the details aren't as sharp and crisp as the next image I'm gonna show you. Here, you can still see the texture in my phone case and even the extremely small branding on the arms of my eyeglasses. But there is a decent amount of grain and softness to the image. On the other hand, the flower I showed you earlier and told you about the macro I took, well, that capture was beautifully done. When you go pixel peeping, you'll see the consequences of having only two megapixels and a 2.4 aperture, but the image, quite frankly, is fine enough for social sharing. Same thing with this mimosa. Could be sharper, but taken with the two megapixel macro, I've seen worse, much worse. Video capture on the phone isn't bad. I shot some video of the mimosa as well, and the detail in the bubbles was quite nice. You're going to max the video resolution out at 1080p at 30 frames per second. My overall experience with this device, which runs Snapdragon 695 chipset, has been very positive. Startup can be a bit slow with the icons popping up on the screen, but once things are up and running, it's off to the races. App switching is fast. Scrolling through the menus, despite being a 60 hertz refresh panel, is peppy. And gaming on the device is great, with the exception of one potentially sizable quirk. Though the Norden 25G does come with a USB-C port, I haven't had any of the USB-C gaming controllers connect successfully. So gaming via a Bluetooth controller, sure. But if you like Switch style gaming configurations with a controller like Razer's Kishi, you're out of luck at this point. That goes for anything which does anything other than charge the phone, as I've also tried connecting some audio devices via the USB-C port with no luck. Good news on that is the three and a half millimeter audio port though, which by the way, is powerful enough to push my Hi-Fi Man planar magnetic headphones, albeit at max volume, and the HE4Xs are made to work with smartphones where most planers will require more power to drive them properly. Still though, output from VLC media player and FLAC files were robust with a well-rounded stereo image. The phone ships with Oxygen OS 11.3, which means Android 11, but OnePlus will update the phone to Android 12. However, that's it. You'll get three years of security updates, but OnePlus is only guaranteeing one major OS update. There are some phones still to come this year in or close to this price point, but I'm gonna have to say that if you want to spend less than $300 for a phone in the US, this is the one to beat and should be atop your shortlist. So that's that on the Nord N25G, on OnePlus's Nord N25G. I'm Tashaka Armstrong for reviews.org. If you have any questions about this phone that I didn't answer, go ahead and leave those in the comments. Love chatting with you all. I'll get to them and I will catch you on Sorry, the next video. Did you say that again? No, I'm not gonna say that again.